Hey guys, how are you? So this is Phyllis Eisenstein's The Sorcerer's Son. And this is a pretty good book out of an author that I have really never heard of before, except for this book, um, Phyllis Eisenstein. When I went to Borders to buy this book, it was not available, it was not in print, but Borders had this thing going on where they had a database of people who had their books used and as you can see this is heavily used and I bought this in this condition uh, for more than the book was charged new this is actually considered like a uh, uh, I don't know like a collectible now because I know like on, on eBay I, I was looking at this on eBay and they, they want like it goes for like $35 or something for the book and it's just a book you know out of print fantasy medieval fantasy but it's actually really really good i was very very surprised i've never read phyllis eisenstein before i never heard of her before but i did hear about this book i heard i was i read a zine or someone threw me a little pamphlet or some kind of paper where it was the person's magazine or some kind of thing that they had going on and it was at a candle mass concert after the concert, they threw, the guy threw me a zine and I remember like going up to his, um, on it was a link to MySpace and I went on his MySpace page and the guy had like an active MySpace page and he had a zine and he did like little videos and shit. And so in one of the zines, in one of the little like handouts that he gave me was a review, a recommendation for this book. And just for some reason, I just like Candlemas. So, I figured that this person who also like can likes candle mass probably likes the same kind of fantasy books that I like. So I went ahead and I actually found this book somehow, even though it's out of print. And uh, yeah, so the cover is pretty cool, but it has really nothing to do in the book with the book. I really don't think this cover has anything to do with the book. This is like the main character. It, but it's a nice cover. It's a decently cool illustrated cover. So what happens in this book? Well, this is actually really worth getting. Um, I really do. This is the only Phyllis Eisenstein that I have found that I've ever read. I was not really interested in reading more of her stuff, but I read this and I was just really, really happy with it. Basically, it's this guy. It's a guy and his... Um, his mother is like a wizard and she does this spider web magic where she weaves these spider webs and through the spider webs, she sees through portals into other worlds in the world that they kind of like are in. Now, I read this a while ago, so I don't remember all of it, but basically that's what that is. And there's this whole thing about, he actually goes out into the world to find his father because supposedly his father is a knight and uh, he's a very, very a proud and successful knight and he's a very, very honorable knight and he's around somewhere and he goes out. I don't know if I got the, the story right, but basically these are the elements of the story. He goes out and he looks, he's looking for his father and his father is like either alive or dead, but he doesn't know about it. And so he goes from place to place, he talks to other wizards, and he apprentices for this one wizard who's like pretending to teach him magic and wizardry, but actually he's trying to use him and capture him and lie to him. And basically he's being lied to left and right, mostly about his father, because he's, he's looking for his father, but uh, I'm not sure if he's alive or dead or something like that, but that's the whole drama. And then like someone says, someone finds that his father was dead and tells him the father is dead, but then his father could be alive after that. And it's a lot of, the point is, <laughs> there's, it's a lot of um, different, it's, it's a lot of magic. It's a lot of wizardry. It's a lot of like him going on an adventure and meeting these different, basically they're wizards. And there's a lot of drama and a lot of um, a lot of like plot that goes on around that. And he's trying to learn magic, but he's really a powerful wizard. But he doesn't really know a lot of wizardry. He doesn't know a lot of magic. He doesn't know a lot about the world that he's in. 
but he just goes out there on an adventure um, to find, you know, just, just to find, just to, just, to, just to experience the world. And what's interesting is this world is a medieval fantasy place where there's a lot of wizards and knights and he, uh, he gets on his horse and he rides his horse and then he meets his friend, he meets some another guy that's also kind of out there, also like a young freaking like dude. Um, he's like a little bit over a teenager, like he's maybe 20, 18, 20 or something like that, years old. He, he meets another guy who becomes his friend. And this dude is weird because he has like one eye color that's different than an other eye color. And because of that, he's like been pursued as a as as like a witch and like an evil person. And the people, since it's medieval times and and wizardry times, they're very superstitious. So they believe that because his eye colors are different, that he has the evil eye. So he always tries to conceal his eye color, make sure no one sees it. He keeps like one eye covered, uh, so no one sees like the difference in his eye color. But they become friends and they go on this journey together. They're on horses, there's magic, there's knights, there's, there, there's kids looking for the truth about what happened to his father. Is he somewhere else in the world? Is he alive? Is he dead? They don't know. And he's out there looking for his father. And he's coming across, he, he's meeting these other very powerful wizards. And these wizards are basically all living in this world. And they're really, really careful about uh, the other wizards that are living in there because they know they can get into a, like a wizard fight and and they can like get get messed up <laughs> they can like get really like messed up from like one wizard to the other wizard i mean they don't want to like mess with each other because they're all powerful wizards and they can do a lot of damage to each other so they try to like not to mess with each other so he doesn't tell anybody that he's the son of one of the one of the main wizards but he's able to uh, spin this little, he, he's, he's given this little magic web thing and if he spins the web, he's able to like open this portal and, and talk to um, his mom who's like a wizard also and you know they're able to talk to each other because she's worried about where he's going and what's happening with him and wants to make sure he's safe and what, all that shit. So, uh, so now the thing is about this book is you, you could see uh, this came out in, I don't even know when, but the original price was $3.95 US. And it is, uh, it, it's really, really cool. Um, I'm, tr I'm trying to find the date that this was written on. And it was written, it was written by New American Library, a signet book. And it doesn't really tell you, it's, it's yeah, here we go. A copyright, 1979, Phyllis Eisenstein. And this was, the first printing was 1989, um, of, I guess from this printing, but the story was, was, was written 1979. So it says right here on the front, well-written and absorbing um, and intense immersion into the love of sorcery and the sorcery of love, right? And uh, Alan Dean Foster, author of Maori. And so here's the back of the book, and that's basically the, the main character's horse. Um, and on the back, it also says, an original fantasy, attractive, admirable, and rare. Uh, Stephen R. Donaldson, author of Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, the, Do the Unbeliever, commented on the back of the book, and he says, an original fantasy, attractive, admirable, and rare. Yes. Um, yes, I can. Oh, also another one. Roger Zelazny, author of the Chronicles of Amber, says, I couldn't stop reading Sorcerer's Son from its intriguing beginning to its thunderous close. Yeah, me too. Because this was actually very absorbing. And while it's not the best book I've ever read, it's good and it is a page turner. This does keep you reading. I mean, there are other books that are good, but you read a few chapters and you put it down and like, then you pick it up months later and then you read more of it and then you put it down. This thing makes you read it really, really fast. Um, then there's like this one magic thing where he befriends these cloud people 
these clouds and the clouds um they they do things for him but they're like they live in these cloud world where it, it's all it's all like air and clouds and there's nothing physical there it's just like the worlds that he goes into are really amazing and really interesting the the types of magic that are in here is very interesting the main character is likable and he's very interesting because he doesn't know all of this stuff like he's he's like the weakest character in these this whole world that everyone is just stronger everyone is more powerful but he's learning and he's trying to learn and grow his own power of magic and and be be a real sorcerer like the other people that are you know in the world like the person that he's a, he he goes he apprentice he he tries to learn be an apprentice to a sorcerer his mother is a sorcerer and she tries to teach him his uh, her magic um and it's interesting um i i'm pretty sure other people are gonna like this more than i did um but it is a page turner i mean stephen r donaldson from thomas covenant liked it and chronicles of amber liked it those are two authors i really like um and it, it, it even and it's a pretty good book it's 370 something pages and it's and it's here it's got worlds of and it's pretty much just all book it just says worlds of imagination on the inside fun and fantasy travel science fiction okay the only thing is getting this book is hard i recommend getting this book from um ebay however i know it can be a little bit pricey on ebay uh so i don't know but um anyway if you can get this book um, and you can get a decent price, then, then check it out. It's really cool. Uh, it's really cool. It's, it's a very interesting book. It's very, um, it's very has to do with, if you like magic, if you like medieval fantasy, uh, then check out this book. Um, if you just like apprentice kind of like young people that just want to learn magic and want to learn about their magical world that they're in and their sorcerous world, the world is interesting, the people in it are interesting, the story's interesting. Um, check it out. Let me know if you've read this book and what you thought of it. And um, if you haven't read this out, read this, check it out. Uh, don't go through like too many extremes to get it, but if you're able to read it, give it a shot, give it a go. And let me know if you've read this, let me know what you thought. Um, just put in the comments. I love comments, so I'd really love to know, um, you know what you thought of the book and what you thought of the story and everything like that. And please, um, yeah, so let me know and like and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys in another video and take care and have a good night.